Okay, take a look at this. I partially tore the ligament in my right thumb, so they put me in a cast. I'll be fully real for a second. This cast is not that different from the clubs that most people end up starting in high school. It's gonna last about two weeks. I get a little bit of clout on campus. People are gonna come try to sign their name on it and then it's gone, you'll never see it again. When you're in high school, you see this all the time, okay? You'll have a couple friends or acquaintances that just decide one day they wanna start a club. They get super excited about it for a couple weeks, maybe even a couple months. And then kind of out of nowhere, the club just dies off and no one speaks about it again. What was the point? If you wanna have a successful club in high school, by far the most important aspect is the idea that you use. A much better way to go about thinking about this is that your goal here should be to try to come up with an idea for an extracurricular that you could just do on your own or with a small group of people. And you're taking the idea that you fully could have done on your own, but you're using the club as a means to get more people involved, as a means to scale it. Taking an extracurricular that could have been a nonprofit and making it into a club gives you the opportunity to delegate work, to get more people involved, to have better outreach. There's a lot of advantages to doing it, but at its core, it's an idea that you're truly personally interested in and that you would have done on your own anyways. There are so many different types of clubs and pathways that you can get involved in in high school. Let's just talk about some of the most relevant ones to college admissions, right? First, you're gonna have your more academic oriented clubs that are typically centered around some kind of competition, okay? Some examples are gonna be like speech and debate, science Olympiad, things of that nature, where the club is more of like a shell for people to get together, to get involved, to study, to do work, get educated. And then the actual competition is the content for the club. It's what you prepare for, it's what you do at your meetings, it's what everything is focused on. The second option is if you do something like a nonprofit and turn it into a club, right? It's a more community service oriented activity. And in those kinds of clubs, it's very much self-directed. You create the content and decide what you're gonna do with your time. Before you officially start a club, you need a plan for what the actual content in your club is going to be. The worst thing that can happen to you is that you start a club, get a bunch of people excited and involved about the prospects of what you think you might do, but then as soon as they show up to the first meeting, you just don't have a business plan. You only have one shot to launch your club. Do it correctly. Why get lazy about the things that actually matter? Once people start to see the club that you're working on in a certain lens, if, if that happens to be bad, well then it's really hard to get those members back into the club once you actually have some motion and have something going for you. So let's just get it correct right off the bat. If you're going to start a club. Start it either on your own or with one to two close friends, okay? And don't even pick like your closest friends to start it with because sometimes your homies are not the best people to do something like business with, okay? Start it with people who have the exact same vision for the club. They have the same ambition, the same goals with it, and you know that if you guys are working together, even if you have different perspectives on things, the end goal vision is the same. The larger your starting group is for this club, the less likely it is to succeed. I'm just gonna be honest about that. Because even if you guys have like the same vision for it, not everyone has the same amount of time commitment to it. People are going to be working harder than others. Some people are gonna be kind of slacking off and freeloading. If you try to start this with a group of like seven, eight people, it's not going to go anywhere. Everyone's gonna pull it in a different direction and then boom. Now you're just like the other people who have these little two-week clubs just like the cast. Let's talk about ideas because you have a couple different options for things to do. The easiest is to take a club that already exists and then start a local chapter in your high school. Let's use science fairs as an example because that's something I competed in in high school. If you're going to have a science fair club, your club is essentially a means of facilitating that competition. The competition for science fairs already exists in your state. It exists in your county. The fairs are going on. But if you don't have a science fair club at your school and it's something you want to get involved in, well then boom, you can just take the blueprint club that already exists. There's probably materials online that you can even use to do like your promotions and whatnot. And you just talk to a club advisor, get it started in your high school. And then your whole you're promoting and everything is just to let people know that science fair competitions exist and your school has a means of helping people get through the paperwork, come up with their ideas, go through the process, all of that stuff. For other competition based clubs, you do the exact same thing. These competitions already exist and are being hosted. Your club is just a way to facilitate them and get people at your school involved. The nice part about this is that if you ever want to build on the club further than that, like you're doing science fair stuff already, but you also want to get people um, to be involved in some kind of activism, right? Maybe there's like a science march or some kind of uh, public health thing that people are involved in in your local downtown. And you want to get people going there. You want to do some kind of fundraising related to science and getting kids involved in science. 
All of these things are possible. You just have to start the club somewhere and then build on it from there. Starting an initiative or nonprofit and then transforming that into a club will definitely be more work. I'm not gonna deny it, but it is worth the reward. For most high schools with some kind of nonprofit, it's not like you can just go out there and hire employees on full-time wages. These clubs and getting new members involved, getting them excited about it, giving them like the promise of potentially being in leadership positions in the future and continuing this work, that is how you get your labor force. That is how you get people involved and you actually become a leader. You can delegate to them. You can encourage members to have more ideas. At the end of the day, having more people involved just means that you have more resources to work with. So it can definitely help take what you're working on to the upper levels. When you're first getting your club started and you're in that early planning stage, don't waste your time talking and debating with people about things like leadership positions. If you don't put your effort towards actually making a business plan, when you show up to your first meeting, everyone in that like chemistry classroom that you're using to host is just gonna be sitting and playing Clash Royale on their phones. Like no one is actually going to lock in and focus on what you have to say unless the club has meaning to it. So take your energy and put it on the things that actually matter. Things like leadership positions can always be sorted out later down the line. Just have a, some kind of basic structure, right? A president, uh, a, a vice president, maybe like a secretary or someone to manage things. Keep it simple. Do not try to overcomplicate this. I've seen so many clubs in high school literally deteriorate at like the first stages of generation just because it's a group of like six people who all want to be president of the club, who all contributed to that initial idea or feel like they did. And then boom, all of a sudden now it's a hostile, horrible environment to work in because everyone feels like they're getting cheated or they want to get more out of the club. As much as you might be doing this for college apps, don't think about it like that, okay? The reward for your college application will come when you do the good work, okay? It starts with what you do. Same goes for deciding on things like a club name. Like, who cares, bro? Honestly, who cares what the club is named? If you're starting a science fair club, chances are you will probably just name it science fair club, okay? You don't need something creative or wild. It should just be easy for people to remember and so that they can show up to those meetings later. The thing that I like about starting clubs in high school is that they are usually very low risk with high upside. The only thing you can really lose here is time, right? If you put time into starting a club and it doesn't work out, but as an underclassman in high school, time is something that you have a commodity of, okay? You're not going bankrupt here. It's okay to fail and make mistakes when you're starting these clubs, but why make mistakes that are avoidable, okay? Listen up to this video. Allow me to try to put you on and dodge some of those early mistakes that most people tend to make. Let's talk about the blueprint. Your role as leader is to put in the legwork in the couple months leading up to when you launch your club to get everything sorted out. If you're going to start a club, there's typically like a paperwork process at your high school to get it officially filed and registered. That tends to happen within the first couple weeks of your school year. Keep track of when that's going to happen. And then when that time comes around, get everything that you need. And if we're thinking like very, very practically here, if your school starts around like August, end of August, by usually September, that's when all the clubs tend to kick off. This makes it easy for us because what happens right before August, September, you have summer break. Use that break to go ahead and prep the club, get everything ready. Flush out your ideas, reach out to local organizations, do a pilot program if you feel like that's something applicable. Do everything you can to get this club nice and organized. I found it super useful to have a timeline. This is something that every club can benefit from. The main dates that you wanna keep track of are things like competitions, events, deadlines for finishing up projects. Include everything that would happen over the next semester, if not the entire next academic year. Doing this forces you to develop like a vision for the club and what you wanna get done. But when people also end up joining the club in a couple months when you actually launch it, you also pull up this timeline and can show them that you have a plan for things. You have a plan for when everything's gonna happen. They have expectations for what to keep in mind. It just makes it easier on everyone. Leading a club 100% will take more time than you actually anticipate. So while you have the time, do the actual work related to the club. If you need to reach out to some organization to get like your volunteering set up, or you need to talk to a, like the local science fair to get all that paperwork sorted out, do those things while you feel a little bit more free. Because once the school year kicks off and you have like classwork to deal with, other extracurriculars, there's gonna be some kind of like management work that you didn't expect that's gonna happen before this club. You have to make some kind of like infographic or flyer to help market it, or you're gonna have to, 
and respond to emails for like new people. Make sure that you put yourself in a position where you have the time to handle those things as you come and you don't feel overwhelmed. One of the most important aspects with starting a club is honestly just promoting it. Once it's ready to go around the time, like whenever your school year starts, start promoting it everywhere. Most schools have some type of club fair, which is basically like the event where all the clubs show up, they have like little poster boards or they're doing mini presentations and you can market your club to new members. Everyone shows up there. This is your time to really get your name out there and get people excited and joining your club. Do your marketing, promoting, whatever, around the time that this club fair is going to be so that you can get people to at least show up to the club fair and you know you have a chance at convincing them to join your club. If you have a bunch of friends that you like personally know that you've been talking to about the club, you can also host like a first meeting even before your school's club fair or when most clubs start. That way you can have a much more personalized approach to pitching your club to your friends, seeing how they feel about it, asking them for a little bit of feedback and, and their thoughts regarding things. And then when the official first meeting happens, you're just, it's smooth sailing, right? You have a nice base to work with or a couple homies that you know are committed to your club and you can convince them to show up. Use social media for this as well. I know personally, I was never like a big social media guy in high school and I, I don't even advocate you guys to get on it, but I know that I had some homies who were. They would post all this stuff on the story. They would do like the kind of outreach and DMing people and stuff. If you want to do that or if you have some friends who are down to do that for you, go ahead and have them do it. It's always better to have your name out there. Do not be afraid of getting like rejected by people. I remember when I was at like my club fair and I was pitching like my science for a club, trying to get people to join, doing everything I could in person. Yeah, there are some people who are just not gonna be interested. There are some people who might even clown on you for doing it. Bro, who cares? At, hey, at the end of the day, who's getting the motion? Who's getting the motion? Is it you or is it them? It's you, right? So just keep your mouth shut, okay? Who cares what they think? Who cares if other people are tweaking, bro? You are motion man, you are motion man. Add them all to a custom email list and then send out like a first follow-up email. Your goal with this email is to tell them about the first meeting and do everything you can to convince them to show up. Make it super clear, bold it, what time it is, what day it is, where it is. Make it as easy as possible for them to just show up. Actually take the time to plan out this meeting. Your first meeting is like the biggest impression you're gonna have on people. They're gonna get a vibe for how committed you are, how committed everyone else in the room is. Try to be entertaining, have like a clear agenda for what you wanna cover in the meeting, do what you can to be entertaining, but at the same time, also be very clear about what people are gonna get out of the club, right? What is the goal here? Set the expectation for that as well. Be very clear in what you're trying to accomplish so that that way people don't really have like any questions, right? The goal here is that you people leave that meeting feeling like they want to be involved in this, that they're a little bit impressed by the things that you're doing and that other people are also impressed by it. Your confidence falls onto other people. If you're up there presenting and you're kind of a weak public speaker, you don't have great arguments, you don't have a good answer when someone asks you a question, it just reflects poorly on the club altogether. This is your chance just for, for life, right? To practice that pitching skill. I don't care if you're an introvert or you're soft-spoken, this is something that everyone has to learn and has to undergo at some point. Once your first meeting wraps up and then like by the second and third meeting, you get a good sense of who's actually committed to the club, don't have unrealistic expectations here. Some people are gonna join and some people you'll, you'll like, they show up to the first meeting and you'll never see them again, okay? It's just how this goes. If you can even convince a handful of random people to join your club, that is a major W. Most people don't even get to that stage. You can always continue to scale your club in the coming months or in the following years as well. This is just your start to it. If you ask anyone who has started a club how many members they had in their first year and then their second and third and fourth year, that number is always just on the rise. Like their first year might have had 10 members, second year's 30, third year's 100, okay? These clubs just grow exponentially, but they take time. That's the main thing to keep in mind. So if you're still in your first or second year and your club doesn't have that many members, it doesn't matter. You can still do good work. Treat it like a stepping stone to when you do explode in the following year. I think consistency is super underrated when it comes to hosting a club. You don't need to have meetings that are so often that people literally feel like burnt out showing up to your club or they just feel like you're wasting their time. That's not the goal here. You just wanna have a consistent enough schedule to where you're, you're making progress with things, but people also feel like your club is just another part of their routine. Maybe every other week on Mondays after school, you have people show up. That's just a consistent schedule. Every other Monday, you will host a club meeting. Now that you have everything set up, I gotta be real with you for a second. This is where the hard work actually begins. 
but it's also the fun part because now is when you do the actual club, the competition, the uh, event, the nonprofit, whatever it is that you wanted to do, now is when you do that content. In the process of getting things going, you will lose. You'll lose a lot. It just means that when you eventually do get that big win or break after a couple weeks, months, a year, it feels that much better. The more L's you take and the longer you can stick with it, the better the final reward will be. Just trust me on that one. Bonus tip for everyone who stayed this far in the video and are still locked in watching, when you're starting a club, you have to pick like a club advisor, right? Some kind of adult leader or teacher. Pick this person wisely because you'll probably get quite close with them when you're going through this whole process, you're filling out your paperwork, you're asking them for advice on things and they're giving you tips to get this club going. If they're just good at responding to things like emails and they're actually a little bit passionate about the club, it makes your life easier as opposed to like a teacher who maybe is not as involved or has other commitments as well. You might also want a rec letter from this teacher at some point, so just something to keep in mind. If you guys have any more questions about starting clubs in high school, just throw them in the comment section. You know how we run things over here. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Pratik. Peace.